Oh well, I wish it could be. Oh, text. Oh, it's from Garmin. Are you up for a challenge? Meet us at the first tee at Conway Golf Club. Oh, hello. That's a text. Yeah, it's Garmin. Sorry, we text the wrong number. Are you having a laugh? Right, okay, yes, yeah, so joking aside, we are going to be looking at a Garmin product, but we're also going to be looking at something from Skycaddy and Bushnell. And the idea is to look at three different types of uh, rangefinder GPS systems and find out which I think is best suited to average golfers. It's fair to say that pretty much all golfers now, I think a very high percentage, are carrying one of these types of devices. It's very rare that you see somebody getting to a 150 marker, 200 marker, and uh, striding out the yardage we don't see that anymore which uh, is a bit of a shame in some ways but anyway where we're at right now technology is superb and these are three items that are very much sit at the top of the tree the idea is not to review each of these it's to compare the types of but for reference i've got the bushnell pro xe that is the all singing and all dancing in terms of rangefinder. that's incredible what thing what that thing does and i'll mention what it does as we go along I've got the Skycaddy SX500 and I've got the Garmin Approach S40 watch. Three different devices, they each do different things, ultimately give us a yardage to where we want to go. But I'm going to test out here on the course and like I say, see which is best suited to an average golfer. Right, the first thing we're going to look at is ease of use and perhaps how that will relate to speed of play. So first of all, the Bushnell, um, they come with a fancy pouch that can be attached to the bag. I must admit, I use Bushnell at the moment, so mine's just in the front pocket. It's a case of rooting around for it in the bag. So you've got your Bushnell. You've then got to spend a little bit of time uh, searching out for the target and back into the little pouch or bag, wherever you decide to keep it. The SX500, again, depending on where you want to keep it, I'd keep it in the front pocket. Point to mention on this, it's always on this machine throughout the round. So as soon as you pick it up and out the bag, you're immediately accessing data. And the one that sort of, is the easiest in terms of use because it is just a quick flick of the wrist, look at the watch and you're immediately accessing the data that you want. In terms of green data that is, you might want to move things around a little bit in terms of looking for hazards and such like, but in terms of access and speed of play, then the watch in that case is a clear winner. So next thing I want to talk about is ease of use and this could apply to, without want to be disrespectful, there's things like sort of how, how good your eyesight is in terms of visibility and how good the screens are. And using a bustle is the first one. Obviously, you've got to take a look through the, the sort of binocular type. You've got to zap onto a target. Um, it does alert you as soon as you're fixed onto that target, but the number display in there is relatively small. So again, I would think for the majority of people, decent eyesight, that's not an issue. But for some people uh, that may be struggling in that department, that's one thing that might be worth considering. The display on the SX500, I mentioned when I did the, uh, the review, is, is f phenomenal. I just had a panic there, I hadn't pressed uh, my audio on. Yeah, it, it's fantastic. The display is superb, it's a five inch screen, it's full colour. You can zoom into that if you're struggling in terms of, like I said, in terms of your eyesight or whatever, but I wouldn't think you'd need to. The numbers are very bold and visible. With the watch, visibility wise, it's very, very good. It's on the same lines as the SX500. Very clear, big and bold numbers, front, middle and back again in terms of greens. It becomes a little bit more fiddly in terms of use uh, when you want to move things around a bit in terms of you can move pin positions as you can with the SX500 to something that you can see out there on the green. And I would say for ease of use, SX500 wins by an absolute country mile, to be honest with you. And it's one of the big, big key factors that this thing does incredibly well. I can't believe how nice it is today down here at Conway. There's one feature we've got to look at with the Bushnell and this incredibly clever Bushnell. This is a Pro XE and it's got some elements in there which we're not going to find in the other two devices. And I'm going to mention it very briefly. And when I look at this flag here as a prime example, 
Yardage to the flag is 51 degrees, but what this thing does unbelievably is it makes allowance for both temperature and for slope, so where we're playing from. And due to it makes a 2% adjustment, it's saying on that screen when I look at it now, so 51 to the flag. In today's temperatures, it's playing 53. That's incredibly accurate information, and I think it sort of tells a tale of perhaps who that feature at least is aimed at, and it's probably not me. And one other thing to consider with the watch in particular is it's quite a decent looking piece of kit, and obviously it doubles up as more than just a piece of equipment that you can use on a golf course. So I think you've also got to consider, and a bonus, it's a decent looking watch on the wrist to be fair. Now it doesn't happen too often on a Lynx course, and that being that you can't see the flag, because generally it's laid out in front of you. You don't get many trees on Lynx courses, but we've got a situation here at Conway where there's some humps and bumps there, and over the top, uh, about 108 yards away, there is a green. And I say that because I know where it is, and I know the centre of the green from the watch, and I can get it from the sky caddy, but I can't get that from the bush tunnel. That's one of the downers of a rangefinder. And as I walk sort of 60, 70 yards to my right, and I can get an angle in there to the flag, then I've got no idea as to where I'm playing. So I think it's probably more apparent on a woodland course, on treed areas, where you're just literally playing some blind shots, and if you can't get that zapped into a flag then you've got a bit of a problem and like I said a real bonus in terms of the watch the interesting thing uh, watch and handheld device the interesting thing for me and I've not tried it on the SX500 is the way it automatically finds the hole one of the issues that used to be was that if you'd I've just chopped and changed a little bit across this golf course and I've just arrived on the ninth and the watch automatically recognized that I was playing down nine and changed the uh, the position accordingly so a clever little bit on the watch there and I've got a feeling that would be the same on the SX500. Right, we're losing a bit of light, so I think it's time to draw this one to a close. And uh, a very brief summary. Um, I think almost the three devices, or maybe two out of three, are aimed at certain uh, average golfers. And we've got the Pro uh, Rangefinder aimed at the, the better player. I think it's as simple as that. The more accurate player, let's say. And uh, for me, how precise that thing is in terms of that particular model is incredible to make allowances for temperature and also for slope but again can you use them in competition golf no so uh, slightly again debatable on that one but if you're a real serious player and every yard counts then yes by all means go to them and I think a range finder in general which I play um, is it over egging it a little bit in terms of the accuracy maybe maybe not I don't know but for me ease of use the display um, far more uh, usable um, I think front, middle and back is really, again, for average golfers, more than enough in terms of information. How many times should we just go for the middle of the green? I bet if we took that yardage all the time in trying, instead of trying to pin seek when we shouldn't, I think that's much more relevant information that's applicable to us. The fact that you can then find yardages to uh, all kinds of bunkers, trees and all the rest of it in and around the course. I suppose you can do that to a degree with the bushnell, but the fact it's laid out in front of you, the hole, the shape of the hole is laid out in front of you on the uh, SX500. I think for me, if I was making a choice, and one more thing actually, the thing that I didn't think I would like is the I don't play golf in a watch and I literally forgot that thing was on. It's uh, very, very comfortable, it's very, very light, so it didn't impede me whatsoever in terms of playing golf in it. For me, it's definitely without doubt the watch or the SX500, and I think if I was making a choice, do you know what, I'm, I'm stuck on that one, to be honest. I was gonna say the SX500, but I really like the watch, and I like the fact that it, it is a watch as well, and it gives me more than enough, I think, in terms of information. But the point is, what's best for the average golfer? I would say one of those two devices. And uh, for the better player, it's maybe the Bushnell. I made heavy weather of that, didn't I? Flipping heck, it was a bit of a long drawn out uh, conclusion. I'm out of breath. Anyway, I'm done. I'll see you later. Happy Christmas.